Today on the Reptilian Overlord Says Podcast, I am going to be discussing not editing podcasts, missing your content deadlines, and a whole lot more, so go ahead and stick around. Card one is officially done, and we are going to start with my rant about not editing a podcast. I think that editing is absolutely crucial for podcasts because editing allows you to come across smarter. Editing allows you to cut out any kind of mistakes. Editing allows you to respect your audience's time more. I love editing podcasts because it allows me to put my best foot forward. That's why I think the vast majority of podcasters should edit. I don't think you should have this mentality of, oh, well, no agenda doesn't edit. Oh, well, Joe Rogan doesn't edit, so I'm not going to edit either. People want to hear all my mistakes and all the goofiness and allow me to waste 30 minutes of their time. I don't think anybody should have that mentality. People like No Agenda, people like Joe Rogan are able to skip editing because they have acquired that talent over decades of practice, over decades in the field of presenting, of hosting, of interviewing. All of that to say, I am not going to edit this podcast episode. You will not have any cuts in the middle. It's... The, it's this will be warts and all. <laughs> Case in point, I would have edited that out, but not today, because I want you to see what it is actually like recording a podcast. I want you to see how bad you can be at this and still have a polished final product. I am not going to be editing. The only cuts there will be will be when I need to insert an audio bumper for a segment the intro for the audio version, the Ask Bandrew thing, whatever it is, the audio bumper. Edit your podcasts, okay? Unless you have decades of experience and you are just that interesting where people have this need to see you mess up. They think that it is the most endearing quality in anybody ever. Unless that's you, edit your podcasts. And you will see why I edit mine so heavily. I edit so much. Card two is done. And yes, I brought back the cards because I loved this plain black background so much. And that means I have no computer next to me. Maybe I should discuss this in the what I've been testing. Next thing I want to discuss is don't force the release. Don't force a release in order to hit an arbitrary content release deadline. This assumes you don't have a bunch of sponsorships. There's a YouTube channel that I used to watch. I can't remember what it was. Eric was his name. And at the end of the month, he would release four or five videos. And they were all just these ads about Knob Hill. What is it? Nobbins? Some British goof thing? I don't... <laughs> this, is, this is why I edit. But... Unless you have a bunch of advertisers you have to appease with your release date, I don't think that you should put something out to meet an arbitrary deadline that you set for yourself. The reason I am sharing this is this is something that I had to come to terms with this last week. I had my review of the Samson C-02s completed on Monday evening. It was ready to go out Tuesday morning. I had it scheduled, I had it uploaded, I had everything ready to go. But as I was laying in bed, after I had finished up work, I was thinking, oh gosh, I don't think this is as good as it ought to be. I tried something different on the acoustic guitar test. I really didn't like how it turned out. I didn't like my conclusions because it was skewed by that one test that I did. I'm going to go ahead and refilm a bunch of stuff and then re assess and re-edit the, the review, and then upload that final version. That means I am not going to hit my Tuesday release date. I always release my reviews on Tuesday. That is an arbitrary deadline that I set for myself. And if I had made the decision to stick to this arbitrary deadline, I would have released what I thought to be 
a subpar product, a subpar review video, and that would have reflected negatively on me for years to come. Assuming that Samson does not discontinue the C02s tomorrow. Assuming that doesn't happen, whenever somebody's researching the C02s, they will sometimes, maybe, hopefully for me, come across my review. And if that happens, and my review video was garbage, that would reflect negatively on me. So I made the executive decision because I have to go through so many other executives. There are so many people in this podcastage empire that I had to go and get authorization from every single one of them to say, you know what, we're going to postpone until the next day so you can refilm the parts you're unhappy with and make it a more well-formulated review. So I just wanted to share that with you because I think that's interesting. I think learning from other people's content creation journey is interesting and can be very helpful because I know we put a lot of a lot of stress on ourselves, a lot of requirements on ourselves to meet these deadlines because if we don't put out a video every single week, oh my God, the YouTube algorithm is going to hate us. You know who else would hate us? Our audiences, the people who watch us, the people who trust us. If you put out something that is absolute poppycock. So (laughs) I opted to tick off the YouTube algorithm in order to put out a better video. Algorithm be damned. So that is my PSA for the week. Card three. Done. That was a good throw. Next, this is card 3.5, because after I finished my outline, I realized, oh, I need to add this in. What I've been testing, you have been listening to it. First thing I have to say, y'all are rude as heck. Y'all rude. I have been working my fingers to the bone to (laughs) to bring you useful content, to bring you episodes of this show that were made the lowest cost possible. What did you point out? You didn't say, oh, thanks for doing that. That's really great. Drives home the point, Bandra. I appreciate it. You said, oh, what about the cable? What what about the lighting? The most egregious, I can't believe you would do this to me. What about the watch? Eat my shorts. (laughs) Eat my shorts, you buttheads. I gave, oh, and headphones. That's the one that hurts me the most. Oh, what about your headphones? Because I was wearing Sennheiser HD 650s. I got them for 250 bucks. Apparently they go for like 500 bucks now. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Inflation. I think they've always been that expensive. I just got them on a good deal, but I took your criticisms to heart, which is <laughs> something that I don't recommend. Don't take YouTube comment criticisms to heart, but I did. So I this is the worst. I am wearing 3.5 millimeter Apple AirPods, not AirPods, earbuds that I got with my iPhone 6 in 2014, 2015. And I know I can already see the, co- oh, but what adapter are you using? I bet that costs a dollar. F- Shut up. <laughs> Leave me alone. It's a, some adapter. It probably came with the Sennheiser HD. No, not those because those are quarter inch. I don't know. It's a dollar adapter. Get off my case there. For the cable, I switched out. I am using an Amazon Basics cable. And for the... You made me do it. Did you hear all that handling noise? I took off my other watch and I am wearing the cheapest G-Shock that I own. I think I paid $30 for it. So just leave me alone. I'm not going to shut off the lighting now. Gosh, you guys are so mean. I'm trying to help out and you're just... Just nitpicking everything. Ah! That's that's all that I wanted to say. I'm continuing down this journey because it's fun for me. Pay no never mind to the color of the windscreen. I'm not trying to convey any secret messages. Yes, it's green. It is green. You know what that means. Next, we are going to what you had to say. And maybe it's because I switched to the more affordable gear, but the budget of this show has skyrocketed. Let me move closer to the camera if my headphones will allow it. We have printouts of the comments on the cards. How about that? The budget of this show has skyrocketed. The production value to the moon. 
So the first comment <laughs> comes from Black Rain. He says, regarding swearing at work, as a reminder, as previously discussed, per our previous conversation, if you recall, all other very good options if you're having a really busy morning of not swearing. Black Rain, thank you very much for the comment. I really do appreciate it because these are some great alternatives. I think having civil ways of swearing at people and degrading people at work is always a good thing to have in your back pocket. Thank you for these. As previously discussed, I think it's good to treat people with respect and not swear at them in cute ways that they don't understand. Kind of like the Southern, oh, bless their heart. I learned that a few years ago. I always thought that people from the South were being really nice. Oh, bless his heart. No, that's, look it up. What, what does bless their heart really mean? <laughs> it's kind of the same thing. Black rain, thank you kindly. That card is done. I shouldn't be throwing that. That's a high quality card with how much printer ink costs. Goodness gracious, I had to buy new printer ink. Cost like 150 bucks. $150. And those things will last, what, 50 pages? It's criminal. That's why we only have two commas, because I can't afford to print out more. Our budget is skyrocketed, but not that much. This next comment comes from Newfoundmiss. They say, The thing about the reptilian joke is that with how dumb things have become... I don't know if you're serious or not. I miss when conspiracies were fun. I have a question for you, newfound miss. Is it a joke? Is it not a joke? How can I be joking about something as serious as the reptilian elite rising up to take over the world? I have a question for you. Have you ever seen a lizard and Barack Obama in the same room? I don't think so. Have you ever seen Anderson Cooper and his eyelids, multiple eyelids, not flapping about? I don't think so. Have you ever looked at an atomic bomb blast, a photograph from the 1940s, and looked a little bit closer and realized that <laughs> Hillary Clinton's face in the shape of a lizard is in it? I don't think so, because if you had, if you had done any of those things, if you had seen a lizard in Barack Obama, you would understand. That doesn't make any sense. If you had seen Anderson Cooper with his multiple eyelids flapping about breathing, you would understand. If you saw Hillary Clinton's face in the 1945 atomic bomb blast over Hiroshima, you would understand the severity of this situation, but here you are doubting it. Do you know what it means to doubt this? It means you're a coward. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is fun. We are friends. We are having a good time. Do you understand why I edit my podcasts now? Because this would all be cut. <laughs> This would all be cut and be left on the floor because this is not worthwhile at all, but we are sticking with it. But think about it. How often have you seen Barack Obama just laying in the sun? Anderson Cooper just laying in the sun? Hillary Clinton laying in the sun? How often do you see them out in the day? That's because they're cold-blooded. They're reptiles. What about George Bush? Have you seen him out in the sun? Reptilian cold blood. You get it now. You, you understand. You're free. <laughs> You're free. Go forth and, and live your life of fear. What was your... I forgot your name. Oh, by the way, my card, it is indicative of the lizard people. Newfound miss. Go forth. You are free to live your life. That is it for what you had to say. Now let us jump to the Ask Band Drew segment, my favorite part of the show.
Welcome back to the Ask Bandrew segment. If you have questions, go to askbandrew.com. There are instructions on how to send in audio, video, and text-based questions. I do prefer audio and video questions because then you get a break from me reading. You get a break from hearing me speak. We get to hear how you sound on your equipment, and that is just a joy. I have a reminder. If you are sending in audio or video, please try to limit the length to 60 seconds, 90 seconds at the very most. I wanted to include a submission, but it was four minutes long. 90 seconds at the very, very most, but try to keep it under 60. I had to leave somebody out because I can't have a four-minute submission. I received one before that was six minutes, seven minutes. I couldn't include it. I can't edit seven minutes of content down to 30 seconds. 90 seconds max. The first submission, these all come from SpeakPipe, comes from Kevin. He sa- He says, yeah, he says, go, go with it, Kevin. Just say it already. <laughs> Greetings, Bandrew and listeners of the Bandrew Says podcast. My name is Kevin, and I've recently been looking into the world of voiceover and audio recording. And I submit today with a request for a recommendation on which microphone you believe I should upgrade to. Are there any general recommendations on microphones you believe that would suit my voice in particular? Currently, I'm recording on a blue snowball, and I find its performance to be rather underwhelming. And I don't have a particular price range, but are there any microphones you believe that would suit my voice in particular? All right, Kevin, thank you very much for the voice submission. What a set of pipes you got on you. What a set of pipes. Yowza. Auga. Um, (laughs) Kevin has a very deep voice, and he is on a blue snowball. And his question is, what microphones would I recommend for him? I have good news and bad news. The good news is pretty much anything is going to sound better than the snowball that you are on right now. It sounds very congested in the mids. It's not the most flattering mic. When I used it in the past, I was amazed that it even functioned at that price because in 2015, I was still exploring and understanding, oh, you can get pretty decent XLR mics for 50 bucks and then plug them into a $30 interface. You're way better off. I was still learning all of this. I was learning the ins and outs of the all of the budget audio gear and just audio gear in general. So good news. That's the good news. No matter what you do, it's most likely going to sound significantly better. My recommendations are going, I'm going to give you a handful of them. You said you don't really have a budget. I think I'm going to hit your budget. Lewitt LCT 440. It's not my favorite microphone because I have a higher pitched voice. It is a bit harsh. It is a bit grating. And the LCT 440 is a very bright microphone. But I know a lot of people with heavier voices, with darker voices, with bathier, bathier voices. They love it. They can't get enough of it. Soccer and Thovadash. That is terrible. (laughs) They love it because it doesn't sound muddy on them because the bass is recessed and then it adds a lot of clarity to their voice because it, it has a very big presence treble and air boost. That's the first one. That's 270 bucks. The NT1, I like that one more, but that is going to be more neutral sounding. It does have a bit of sibilance in it, but it's a more neutral sounding microphone, darker sounding, not as bright, and a bit more bass. So that may not be the best fit. But LCT 440. Then the go to for voiceover work, the Sennheiser MKH 416. That's $1,000, or was last time I looked. The, no- hello, Neumann, TLM 103. A lot of people don't like the top end on that. Again, I think for a very bassy voice like you, like yours, you're not your voice. You are so much more than your voice, Kevin. It's not Your voice does not define you. You define you, okay? You're a beautiful soul. Understand, this is so silly. What am I talking about? 
I really want to edit, but I'm not going to. You get all of this. Aren't you angry about it? <laughs> Doesn't this just piss you off? Yeah, it pisses me off too. And the last one I am recommending is the Neumann U87. Hello, Neumann U87 AI. Recommending all of those because those are industry standard voiceover microphones. A lot of them aren't going to be people's favorites. They are just industry standards and they function. I would consider if you're if you're willing to stretch to the thousand dollar range, the MKH four sixteen TLM one hundred three. I would suggest looking at something like the Austrian Audio OC eighty one eight or eighty eight eighteen. That doesn't sound as funny, so we'll go with the eighty one eight. I think that's a great sounding microphone. I like. It is still a bright microphone, but it is much smoother sounding than the TLM-103 and a lot more versatile. Around that price range, you also have the Soyuz Bomblet, Soyuz Bomblet. That's around $1,100. You have the AKG C414s. And if I was going between the 414s and the Austrian Audio OC-818, I'd probably go Austrian audio because for me, the AKGs, the modern ones, I haven't tried any of the classics. I haven't tried any of the older models, but the modern 414s, they seem a little bit harsh compared to something like the 818. So those are my recommendations. But as far as deciding you can't really listen to my samples because my voice is nothing like yours. You need to go to Mike Delgadio's channel, Booth Junkie, Booth Junkie, and check out his videos. Because I think he is, I don't, maybe he hasn't ever reviewed the U87, has he? I am 99% sure he's done the 440, 416, TLM 103, and I think he may have done an older version of the 414 that he got in a box of microphones that he bought from some musician. I don't know. Okay, why did I sound like that? <laughs> Jeez Louise. I should quit. Kevin, I hope that was helpful. This card is done. I'm ashamed of myself. Thank you very much for the submission. Next we have... This doesn't make sense. I don't trust myself because this next submission is from Kevin also. I don't believe you passed Bandrew. You are lying to me. This is not Kevin or the last gentleman was not Kevin. You're making stuff up. Okay, good. The third one isn't from Kevin also. Take it away, Kevin, I think. Hey, Bandrew. Um, I've never used this before. I had a question for you about improving my audio. I like this microphone. I like how it sounds, but there's one thing it picks up on. It picks up on those mouth noises, you know, the that I apologize about doing that to you. Um, but I was wondering other than the normal ways that people suggest, like, you know, water, et cetera, if there was an easier way of reducing those mouth clickies, like if getting further away from the mic or lowering the gain, uh, thank you very much for your time. My name is Justin. I'm using a Loughton LS208. Not that you care. Have a good day. Bye. Kevin, thank you very much for the voice submission. You are currently using the Loughton Audio LS208. If I am remembering correctly, why did I say that? Remembering correctly, that is Loughton Audio's broadcast condenser microphone. Very good. And your question is, how do you decrease mouth clicks? I think I just answered this recently, but I will answer it again because you asked it and I want to answer all the questions that I get that are within the time limit. It is very simple. There are th four things. I forgot I added a second column. Number one, stay hydrated. That's the thing that everybody says. Uh, 1.5, I'm adding this. Marshmallows kind of work and it's just a nice treat. I had to throw away the bag of marshmallows I had because I, I just found myself snacking on them. Ooh, I get to record. I'm going to eat five marshmallows. No, you fatty. Stop it. So I had to get rid of them because <laughs> I don't have the self-control. 
Can you tell why I don't drink? Because I don't have the self-control. So if I am going to be tempted by the marshmallows and the candy bars and the frozen pizzas, the emergency pizzas, and all of the deliciousness, no, I should not, I'm not going to have it in my house. So I'm going to have delicious things like vegetables and chicken, raw unsalted almonds. Amazing. So <laughs> hydrate. Eat some marshmallows, that's 1.5, to get farther from the microphone, as you alluded to. Getting farther from the microphone, you're not going to be able to just move farther away from the microphone, and that's it. Moving farther away from the microphone and then projecting a bit more. So I guess this is kind of one. I have it written down as two and three. But get, getting farther away from the mic and then projecting a bit more. Don't just move away and just keep whispering. You're going to have to speak up. Speak up, my boy. Speak up. Project. You are on a stage. You are a, an actor. You need to do that because as you project a bit more, your voice is going to be louder in relationship to the... Don't ever do that again. <laughs> the clicks. The video is ridiculous. <laughs> your voice will be louder than the clicks of your mouth. So that is what I recommend. And then number four, this is a cheat. There are plugins. Use a plugin. Use a plugin and remove the mouth clicks. I'm not going to be doing any of that. I'm still using all the stock plugins. Nobody said, oh, Bandrew, great job. I really appreciate you doing that. Great job just using stock plugins. Sounds great, Bandrew. Great job. Your watch is too expensive, Bandrew. Your headphones are too expensive, Bandrew. <laughs> That's how you sound to me. Leave me alone. I hope that was helpful. Kevin, I think. <laughs> I appreciate you. Are we having a good time? Let me know in the comments on YouTube. Are we having a good time seeing what Bandrew is like with no editing? I think I may have to do another edit right here because this camera is about to run out of time. That's a, that's a stupid thing, isn't it? Oh, we can't extend it past 29 minutes, 59 seconds, or it'll be a video camera. Then the tariffs would rip us to shreds. So I'm stuck with 29 minutes, 59 seconds. I'm fine with it. I am fine with it. Doesn't bother me in the slightest. Card done. Going to restart this camera now. Something that I am really struggling with with this really budget setup is just the headphone length. Because I'm not at my desk, I am maybe three or four feet away from my desk over here, which is where the Behringer UM2 is. And as I move, the headphones just rip on the interface and it hurts my ears, my little earsies. I hope you're happy with yourselves, causing me physical pain. I forgot to mention this. Somebody was, a Liberty Dude was saying, what is your methodology or what is your technique for hand-holding a microphone. I don't know if it actually does anything. I loop the cable so that I don't have the cable draping off the back just getting tugged on as the cable moves around. And secondly, I have a death grip on the microphone. I have moved my hand around quite a bit this episode and you will have noticed, oh boy, it is very bad. So I try to keep a death grip on this and I kind of have to burp. Will I be able to curb it? Will I be able to hide it? Because I can't edit it. I will just mute it. We have one final Ask Bandrew submission. This is from an unnamed individual. Let's call him Kevin. Take it away, Kevin. Hey, what is up, Bandrew? Um, I wanted to ask you a question. What you thought of my microphone sound uh, right now with the setup that I have, I'm running a Audio-Technica 2005 USB dynamic microphone. And um, to, you know, it goes through an equalizer APO with a bunch of VST plugins. Uh, thank you for your thoughts. Kevin, thank you very much for the voice submission. I really do appreciate it. Your question is... 
You are using the Audio Technica AT2005 USB with EQ and processing. What are my thoughts on your audio? There is one thing that's, that stood out to me quite a bit. That thing, if you already know in the comments, let me know. That's called engagement. I am harvesting your engagement to try to get clicks, to try to get attention on YouTube, to try to get into the favor of the YouTube algorithm because it's the only thing that makes me feel alive anymore. <laughs> the noise removal in your audio is weird sounding. There is this whooshing sound. It was a lot worse at the beginning and then as the clip went on, it got a bit better. So I think there's multiple things going on. I think there may have been some kind of dynamic audio removal, some kind of noise suppression plugin, which learned the sound profile over those 45 seconds and the first 10, 15 seconds it was still learning. Then it got better and got better at removing it. It learned what the noise was and removed it a bit more. But then also the gate. It sounds as though you have a gate and it keeps opening and closing. And when it opens, you can hear the hiss. Sounds like maybe there's a fan on in the background. I don't think you should be getting that level of hiss, that level of noise with the AT2005 USB Unless you're running it into, I don't know, maybe the Steinberg UR22s. Because those are some of the noisiest preamps out there. Maybe, <laughs> I doubt you're doing it. The Apogee Boom, that's a new one that apparently has a an EIN of negative 120. Oof! Oof! Was that a good one? That sounded good. Oof! I don't... <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard the the official one. I've just heard people say, oh, that sounded a lot like the original. Oof. Let me know. <laughs> How was that? So that's the main thing that I noticed. That's the first thing you need to fix before you go any farther. The noise removal is off. There's this whooshing sound in the beginning. And then when it settles the gate is very obvious when it's opening and closing, and that is by far the most distracting thing. As far as the tone of the recording, it sounded fine. If I stumbled across that on YouTube, I would have no complaints. Even with the noise removal issues, I still probably wouldn't complain. But since you're asking me, fix it! I don't mean to be rude, but fix it. Yeah, that's the one thing. Reptilian Overlord says podcast. There's no face on this card, but that is the final card. Do you know what that means? The show is over. The show is over. And you know what? I had fun with this not whole editing thing. Not whole editing thing. That's not even a sentence. That doesn't even mean anything. What did you think of this? Was this watchable? Was this enjoyable? Or was this the most painful episode of the Reptilian Overlord Says podcast that has ever been produced? And you are jumping off ship. This was such a painful experience for you that you are abandoning ship. And please let me know. Oh, but Bandrew, what about your clothes? What about your chair? What about your desk? It's too expensive. <laughs> You have a $100 desk you got on Amazon. That's not fair. Tell me. <laughs> Why am I just berating people who are kind enough to leave comments? I Okay, let me explain something. When I come at you like this, I do it in good fun because I like to imagine the people who are poking fun at me like, oh, Bader, your watch is too much. It, it, it doesn't count. Oh, your headphones are... I imagine they're doing that in good fun, just kind of poking at me. Somebody said, oh, Bandrew's being sassy in response to somebody else. Well, first off, the guy had a two-minute submission last week, and I chopped out a lot of it. But he was giving me a good-natured ribbing. So when I said, oh, well, you could just look it up on Google yourself, I was ribbing him back because he kind of came at me. <laughs> but I cut a lot of that out because there was some swearing in it, and I didn't feel like bleeping it out. That takes more work than just... Cut it out. Chop, chop. Gone. Click, click. Deleted. What was that from? Liar, liar. Oh, gosh. 
I used to watch that movie so much. Oh, that was a nice image. Del- <laughs> no, I think it just says click, 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 deleted. What would that be? What is click, click, deleted? Are you doing control A? What was he? What was Jim Carrey doing in Liar Liar? What was he clicking? What was he clicking? And what was he deleting? Was he clicking with his mouse and then clicking the delete button? This is important. What is happening? Okay. Now I really am just wasting your time. And that is one thing that I truly do fear. So I am just going to wrap up now. And I will talk to you next week. I love you so much. You are an amazing human being, especially if you lasted all the way through this episode. I hope you have an amazing Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Next Sunday, I will talk at you. Use affordable gear. Wear cheap watches. Use cheap microphones. Live your life to the fullest. And rock and roll, my dudes. And my lasses, dudettes. Peace out, homies. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Whoa, whoa. Boop. And once again, we want to thank Podcastage for sponsoring this previous hour of the Epic Live stream. good coming up either. This has been a Geeks Rising production. Your executive producer is Bandrew Scott. For more information, head over to www.geeksrising.com.